days from the election, Donald Trump and MAGA and the right is using fear as much as they can to win this election, to get their voters out to vote. Now think about that for just a moment. That's what you've got. That's how you're trying to win. You're trying to scare voters into voting for you. You're appealing to their, their fears, their base instincts, their worries, their concerns. This is what the right does. This is what the right has done for a long, long time. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not of the left. I am, I am still of the right. I come from the right. I come from right wing media. I come from right wing politics. I know of what I speak because I used to do this. I used to do this when I was a member of Congress. I used to do this when I had my syndicated talk radio show. I used to scare my listeners into listening to me. What you just seen there was a small clip from Joe Walsh, a conservative that's been around in politics and syndicate radio, and he's a true conservative. But he's one of the many conservatives that are standing up to Trump. I'm, I'm going to make a point uh, with him of why I'm utilizing and want you to see the footage with him, because this is a Christian station and, yet, and it's not a political station. But unfortunately, we're in the political world because evangelicals have decided to stick their nose into the political arena instead of focusing on the gospel of Jesus Christ anymore and pushed him to the side and elevated a man named Donald Trump as their savior. So that's why we talk about these things. Unfortunately, I would love to talk about other things, but unfortunately, millions are being led astray because of a whole lot of frauds. And a lot of these frauds have lost their minds over these last several days and months, I've noticed, especially now that the convention starts today. And many of them are going in, it's like they're going insane. And one of them, one in particular, Marcus Rogers, the self-appointed pastor, and we won't get into all of his hoopla and all the craziness. We know where he is with his this crazy teachings and, and, and everything else and his uh, insecurities and everything else. But he, he's like on a tirade. So we're going to focus on a few people here. But let's listen some more to Joe Walsh, and then we'll come back and dive into just a few of the people that I had on the thumbnail and we'll close this message out because I want you to stay with me at the end because I'm going to share a story about a lesbian uh, friend, gay friend or something uh, that my wife has that's a, a co-worker of hers that how, that we've been around several, uh, a whole lot, uh, not a whole lot, but there's times at times. And, and I just want to share with you. It, it'll be interesting. I want you to hear that. So stay, stick around to the end so you can hear the story. So let's listen back to Joe Walsh. Follow me and they vote for me. I thought about this yesterday. The Trump campaign put up a meme. They put up a meme, a picture of a nice middle class suburban neighborhood on the left. And then on the right, same kind of sort of neighborhood, but the entire picture is full of black and brown faces, black and brown faces on top of each other, crowded, like marauding in this simple suburban neighborhood. Why a meme like that? Simple, because Donald Trump wants Americans to think if you don't vote for him, your neighborhood is going to be overrun with black and brown thugs, black and brown criminals. That's why Donald Trump put that meme out, to scare middle-class America, to scare regular Americans. This is what your neighborhood looked like when Donald Trump was president, nice and peaceful and beautiful. But if Kamala Harris becomes president, this is what your neighborhood will look like. Scary black faces, black criminals everywhere. It's racist. It's bigoted. It's cruel. It's ugly. It's divisive. 
It's fear mongering. And sadly, it works. They do it on purpose. I did it way more often than I'm comfortable of acknowledging. And I've apologized often for doing it. As you can see there, you see the fear. That's what he's talking about. He used to do it. It's been around. Are you old enough? I'm old enough. I've seen it. One of the most uh, uh, damning ads that was out. For you young folks, you would know too much. But go look it up. It's on the, uh, 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 there's a couple of them. The Willie Horton ad. And then there's the one uh, ad where there's this white guy's hands. And he's reading uh, uh, something about a rejection of a job or something. And, and it was like, uh, you needed that job is what it says. I remember it saying that you needed that job. And, and he crawled, bump, crawled, crumbles the paper up. And more so it was saying a minority got the job over the white guy. And that's like these fear to politics and things that go on. This has been going on for a long time. But now it's so unfortunate that it is this fear has jumped into the church realm like never before. And you have these so-called self-appointed prophets, self-appointed pastors, self-appointed Bible teachers, and all of these people that they live a life full of fear. If you know that the Bible tells us that the Lord did not give us a, uh, the spirit of fear, but of power, love, sound mind. He did not give us that. So why are they always living in fear? And no one ever asked them this question. It's always doomsday. If you ever notice, everything is a doomsday message that comes from them. So in their minds, oh, this week, oh, because the democratic thing is going on, it's like, oh, this is the world is just going to end. Oh, my God, if Kamala wins or a Democrat wins or something, oh, it's just come to an end. It sounds ridiculous. And it shows the lack of faith that these folks have. It shows who they worship. It shows everything. Because, you know, God is always in control no matter what happens on this earth. And they focus so much on this earth. And, the, and, and Jesus said his kingdom was not of this world. He didn't have, tell us to utilize the uh, focus on the government to go about bringing about uh, 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 the change within the church realm as far as with the gospel message and all of that. He never said do that. Hey, I want you to rely on the, go to Caesar and all of them and rely on the government, rely on everybody, the kings and queens and everybody to fix things the way, so that that way you, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything. You sit back and they'll just put all these laws in the place and fix everything for you. You won't have to be a fisher of men. You won't have to go out and live your life as an example or anything because we'll just be able to force people into the way we want. These evangelicals that stand by that is disgusting and is pitiful and, and it's, they're, they're a disgrace. And I hate to say they are a disgrace. Because they're lazy, as I continue to say, because they want to push everything else on everyone else. And for example, as we talk about Marcus Rogers is one of the main ones, this self-appointed Internet pastor. We were not going to get into his background. Many of you already know. But if you don't know him, the guy is this. He's like lost his mind over the last several months. A lot of these people I've talked about it with chatting with some of you and I've mentioned it in the video. A lot of them have lost their minds. Have you noticed that the Lord is like bringing the veil down so you can see who some of these people are. They're telling on themselves more and more. And, and, and it's like, wow, you starting to find out, wait a minute, that person, what is he or she talking about? Whoa, they are really are into conspiracy theories. Whoa, then wait a minute, they believe that? This, that, or that? And you starting to see it because you can hide for only so long. You can only hide your evil and conniving, scheming ways for so long because your sins, as scripture said, will find you out. And this is what's happening. And unfortunately, Marcus Rogers has an obsession with the, uh, with the, with the uh, drag queens and gays and, 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 you know, he, and immigrants and abortion and all of these things. He's like, he's really obsessed with 
the gauge stuff. I mean, this is like got him going berserk as if the world is going to come to an end. You know, I mean, just stick to the end of the story so I could, I'm going to tell you about that at the end. But it's just sad because he's just in this total uproar and, and, and this or that. And then you got Amanda Grace where she's sitting there talking about, I have a feeling, I'm not going to even show you the video because this woman, she says, I'm not going to waste time. You can show it. Here's the thumbnail here. You can go listen to the short clip of her talking where she has this feeling that, oh, Kamala is going to get there and, this, and she's going to be rejected. And it's going to be somebody else. And it won't be her receiving the nomination. And then when you go through the comments of her subscribers and all of them, they're so delusional. Some Obama, uh, Obama's really been running it behind the scenes, as you can see here. Then others is like, yeah, I have a feeling, too. She's going to be rejected and this and that and all these conspiracies. And these people live like that. This is how they live. A life of conspiracies, a life of fear tactics, a life of trying to tell you that the world is coming to an end if their politician does not get into power. And they don't care about anything else but somehow trying to get this politician. They don't care about any, I mean, anything else. How ridiculous. They didn't totally forgot, as I'm going to read to you, because they want to always key in on a couple issues, you know, oh, abortion, oh, this, that, or that. That's always the go-to, which they, you know, it, it kills me with that. that, as if there's no other sins in scripture that God is concerned about, as if that's the ultimate sin, if that's the one that basically takes it, take you totally out. And they take the rest of the Bible, rip the pages out and ignore everything else and figure that they can live a life the way that they want to and ignore everything else in the, you know, just ignore everything else in the scriptures. You don't get to do that because guess what? In God's eyes, all sin is equal. In God's eyes, all sin. He doesn't look and say, hmm, that's a little sin. That's a big sin. Okay, this sin is sin. In God's eyes, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's why we need Jesus. That's why the blood of Jesus is important. And these types of people that are going around with this fear mongering within the church realm to where they set up and say, you know what? Uh, uh, well, well, during the primary, you know, I, I, I could have really picked, you know, but even back in 2016, as I've said in many times, I could have picked John Kasich would have been a great president. He, I believe, you know, I don't, I don't know how, how great he would have been, but he would have been a decent president. He's a moderate Republican governor here in my state. We know how he operated. He tried to come against the unions, though, which is a big problem because I'm a union member. And we know how as union members, we stick together for the most part. And we know, but he backed off and compromised and things like that. And he's compromised compromise. And then I mentioned in other videos, you had Asia Hutchinson. You had several people that were true conservatives that still were pro-life, still with all of the cons true conservatism and believe in small government because in all of the other things or whatever, uh, 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 you know, few regulations and all of this kind of stuff. But Marcus Rogers and you got these groups of people that they're, that they're trying to fear people in. They're like, well, you know what? If, if, if this doesn't happen, yeah, they did. all of these immigrants are coming in like never before and they're taking over your town or this or that. And we're even, they just ignore the outlandish statements like somebody Trump would say, talking about all of the jobs were taken by migrants and all of this crazy talk, which is this silly that every single job was taken by a migrant. When most Americans, the truth be told, are you gonna go work on a strawberry farm? I, I mean, I guess if I if I had a family or so and there was nothing else available to me, I'm a, I've worked since I was 13 years old. I'm going to do what I have to do. But most Americans are not going out to the fields and do it di di out there in the fields and doing jobs like that or climbing roofs with uh, uh, bags of shingles and, and, and doing that in the hot heat all day. No, you know, there's uh, no health insurance, no anything. A lot of us are not going to do a lot of them jobs. There's a whole lot of jobs that they do do. Some of these people that come over that are trying to have a better life and things like that. 
that, so, but the, I mean, that's a whole nother subject. But let's look at the scriptures here. Proverbs 6, 19, 16 through 19. Many of you know it. The six things the Lord hates and the seventh is an abomination to him. We already know what the Ten Commandments talk about. Thou shalt not have another God before me. How, you know, lying, bearing false witness, all of those things that many of these people continue to do. And then they want to act like, oh, they want to always push up the abortion in the front and center and forget about the whole everything else. If that's, you don't get to pick and choose from the Bible what you want. Who do you think you are? I mean, it's crazy. We don't get to pick what we pick what we want out of the Bible and then try to chastise others out here in society with just our plucked out scriptures and stuff. Who do we think? Who do you think you are to do something like that? And this is the type of thing. And most of these people, because they're charlatans and they're not called to the ministry, as we always talk about, most of them, they're not. They're lying in the Lord's name. They're out there just looking for fame. Marcus Rogers was at the Capitol on January the 6th. He's talking about going down there to this D.C. event. For what? What are you down there for? Oh, I'm going to go talk with some people. Oh, he's going to go down there, what, stir up an uproar or something? Find himself in jail, which he probably should have been in jail for being at the Capitol on January the 6th. Right. But let, let's just go through these scriptures. You know, uh, uh, assist things the Lord hates. Abomination to him. Many of you, you know it, but we're going to read it again. A proud look. Oh, so many of these. They're so proud. Have you noticed? Including Mr. Trump. He's proud. He's yet to humble himself. Proud. Nothing like pride goes before a fall, as the scripture tells us. And this is the problem. That's why I pray that every ministry that is utilizing Trump as their gain or, or, or their fortune and fame and anything and misleading people with the scriptures, I pray the Lord tears that ministry to shreds and tear it down. That's what I pray, that he close that, close up shop with it. I've been praying that. Many of you have mentioned that you're praying with me. That's what we're praying because these folks are misleading people and leading them off a cliff. A lying tongue. The, the, the guy, the man that's running is a liar, and they had a chance, as I keep saying, they chose Barabbas, and things like that, and then the evangelicals make this excuse and continue to stand by this man that continues to lie, even on some of the most simple things that he gets caught in, saying that, for example, Kamala's crowd was AI, which was this total stupid type talk, and they, they just ignore all of that and just go along with that, but they love lying. So if you like somebody that's an habitual liar, what does that say about you? Are you an habitual liar? What's going on with you to set up and, you know, sit there and you go along with someone that, that's a lie? Because you're lying. You're spreading lies within your family, lies within your church. Now, because this stuff is spread. A lie is like cancer. It spreads like wildfire. Hands that are shed, uh, in, shed innocent blood and things. Many people have blown off the Capitol. January 6th, and act like them people, more so officers and whatever happened with the people deserved it. Even the guy that went to the rap Trump rally, he didn't deserve that for somebody that's being crazy. But it's chaos wherever Mr. Trump goes, unfortunately. Where, here, wherever People act like it's no chaos with the man. Wherever he goes, it's been chaos one time. I mean, it's never ending. But yet Christians are this. For some reason, I don't know, they, 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 they're they blind. They've somehow, this I don't know, living in a, an illusion world, something else. A heart that devises wicked imaginations. You see, these people's hearts, as I always talk about, many of them, these, these ministries, they're wicked. They're always talking. If you notice, the prayers are wicked. They want death to come upon people. They want harm to come upon people. They were praying all of that. They've been doing it for years now, and they haven't stopped. These folks, so, so you want to always bring up the abortion to the top of the thing. We're reading all some things that are applying to multiple people. Million people are falling into the category. Many people are one, two, three, uh, four, four for four. Many people are four for four. These six, these six things the Lord's hate right now we're talking about. Feet that are swift to run the mischief. Look at that. Feet that are swift to run the mischief. 
Marcus Rogers, for example, talking about he ran to the Capitol. Everyone is running everywhere to lie, going to reawakening to, uh, to events, going to Clay uh, Clark. Uh, 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 what's the other guy? The one with, I mean, uh, the, the Steve Bannon was with and all of, all of these events that happens at these churches and people go there. They go to these other events. They're swift to run to these places where there's chaos, there's division, there's lies inside of churches and pastors are welcome them in. That's evil. Just like what, I mean, let, let, I mean let, remember this statement from Liz Cheney? That's evil. That right there is an another an evil, evil. It's all evil, all of it. And a false witness that speaks lies. We just talked about the lies, bearing all of this false witness. And then finally, he that sows discord amongst the brethren. There's nothing but division and hate. And this is the type of thing that Marcus Rogers, he's nothing. He loves division and hate. He loves, he hangs out with Greg Locke. Greg Locke, he's, Proudly, when he goes and opens his church doors, Greg, them chairs from hate preacher Greg Locke is a part of his ministry. And he goes on platforms to go around, and many of these other people go around the nation Sunday mornings preaching hate, talking hate towards the gays, hate towards everybody, and this or that. And as I close out here, but and I'm getting ready to tell you the story real quick, you know, I thought of Revelation 21.8. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexual uh, immorale, uh, yeah, morale, sorcerers. That's who a lot of these, Amanda Grace is nothing but a sorcerer. That's what a whole lot of them are. They basically are psychics and tell you about your, your, your daily events. Troy Blacks, all of them, they tell you your daily events daily. That's all they are. They're not working for the Lord. You think they're hearing from the Lord. They're not hearing from the Lord. They're hearing from familiar spirits, some of them, and some of it is just them just talking crazy because they've lost their minds. And the and, and it says idolaters, which I, we know that idolatry is at an all-time high. Jesus is no longer number one in many of these people's lives. Donald Trump has become number one. Trying to save a nation has become number one. Trying to, you know, holding the flag up and having that is number one. Over Christ, when he said his kingdom is not of this world, he didn't tell us to take the government and try to legislate faith through people and get it that way. He never told us to do it that way. And finally, it says their portion will be in the lake of fire that burns with, surf, with surf, fire and surfer, which is the second death. As I close, I told you in the beginning, wife and stuff. She has a friend. My wife's been in the mortgage business for almost 30 years. And there's a friend of hers uh, that she's a lesbian uh, lady that um, high, she's very productive in the mortgage industry, has been in it about just as long, has a girlfriend that she live in, uh, live with and things like that. And, um, and her wife, co-worker, good friends and stuff. And we've, uh, she lives uh, about 45 minutes away from where, way out in die hard Trump territory. I mean, this is full diehard Republican stronghold, but it's a, as a, now this has been a Trump territory. And here's the thing. She's a diehard Republican, which is great funny to us because it's like, we are, my wife don't always talk, joke with her. You know, they'll kick, kick you out. They don't want you part of the party. So you're not wanted there. But I think it's just, you know, tradition, a lot of these things. They're not religious or anything. And we were talking with her father. And as you can see here, this is me and a wife out on her property. Shooting. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, practicing second. Yeah, that's right. We're out there practicing our rights uh, with our, our gun rights. Yeah, so not everybody is anti and had just having fun out there target practicing and having fun. And we're out there and, you know, we're talking with her dad, you know, as we, when we uh, when we first met her dad and things. And it he is he just telling us how disgusted he was with the fact that she's. You know, he had a really hard time accepting that his daughter was gay and how rough that was. And, you know, and he said, you know, he just had to come to terms with it. But you could you imagine you a die hard conservative the way like that and your child come out like that and things and you have to make a decision. Do you abandon them or do you love them and things? That's a tough one. Now, unfortunately, I think a whole lot of these so-called Christians that call themselves Christians, a lot of them will be in trouble because their hearts ain't right. 
A lot of them will be in trouble because their hearts ain't right. And I would, Marcus Rogers, better pray that his children, they all turn out on that, you know, on the, on the side of the coin that he wants. Because I think that he would have a heart attack. That would be the end of it for him. Anyway, you know, good friends and things, they know where we stand. And when they come over here a couple months ago for our son's birthday party, and uh, uh, we're going to pray. She know we're going to pray when it's time to eat and things like that. We respect uh, their view, and they respect ours and things. But you know what? Here's the thing. There's been some times over the years that her friend uh, sat there and had some rough patches in life, and she's come to my wife and asked her, can you pray for me? You know, it's hard. And she looks to her for words of encouragement word, and, and, and words of faith and, and knowing that my wife is a woman that's strong in the faith and things. And you see, that's what I'm talking about. You can't sit there and demonize people in such a way to where you turn them off and push them away. You can't do that. Because you are literally destroying that person spiritually. And that's what happens. They're being destroyed spiritually. Because people are pushing hate messages. Pushing towards them. And they don't feel comfortable being involved with anything that has to do with church folks. Or anything like that. They don't feel comfortable. And, 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 and I'm thankful that we have left the door open for her friend to feel comfortable and reach out to her when she's going through something because you never know whether it, it may not be us but the seed is planted it's being planted and the Holy Spirit will do the water and the work and you just never know when the breakthrough will happen that's how we supposed to be operating as believers in Christ we're not supposed to be hateful and, and pushing you know just demonizing everybody in society and things that's the point I want to make. Make the difference. Stand firm. Don't be running around in fear. Fear is of the enemy. You can stand firm and be confident and know that things will go forward. My kids know what's going on. I tell them, teach them, and tell them what's going on. They know the difference between right and wrong and this or that. They, and stuff. And nothing in society like that is... I mean, there's, there's these people out here doing their evil deeds and things like that. There's a whole lot of evil going on. But it ultimately, it's, going to co it's coming down to the person making that choice themselves. And they're going to have to be stand before God. You just make sure that you be a great ambassador for the Lord. And do your job and be a witness and not a stumbling block. So that's all I have, Evangelism for God's channel, uh, where we take, uh, talk about issues the church run away from and take the devil head on and punch it right in between the chops. Until the next video, my friends, take care. God bless.